9. The Flecheros The Flecheros, whose name means arrow shooters, are an uncontacted tribe that lives in the Javari region of the Brazilian Amazon, near the Peruvian border. So little is known about them, even their language and exact ethnicity are mysteries. What we do know is that this group is extremely skilled with bows and poison arrows, hence their nickname, and some have learned the hard way that they don't hesitate to shoot at intruders. Journalist Scott Wallace is one of the very few people who've ever come face to face with the flesh arrows. In 2002, he ventured into their territory with the noble goals of protecting the tribe and the resource-filled land. His mission involved assessing the group's health, which had to be done from a distance as to not transmit dangerous germs that the flesh arrows have no natural resistance or immunity to. Sadly, the Brazilian government has scaled back on its funding for protecting its uncontacted tribes over recent years, leaving groups like the flesh arrows increasingly vulnerable to the outside world. In 2017, a group of gold miners who had just finished an illegal job in the Amazon bragged while out at a bar about how they murdered 10 Flecheros members they encountered in the rainforest. As if bragging about murder wasn't enough, the killers had tools and other personal effects they had taken from the slain bodies as trophies to prove their story was true. Pretty terrible if you ask us. The horrific ordeal drew widespread criticism against the Brazilian government for slashing its budget on protecting the vulnerable indigenous groups. Many suspect that these needless killings happen more often than anyone realizes, since they tend to occur in extremely remote regions, far from the scrutiny of mainstream society or law enforcement. 8. The Korowai The Korowai, also called the Kalufo, are a small group of around 3,000 to 4,000 people who live in the Indonesian province of Papua, near the Papua New Guinea border. They were supposedly completely unaware of the outside world's existence until anthropologists sought them out during the 1970s, according to the Daily Telegraph. This group of hunter-gatherers is one of the only known untouched tribes to practice cannibalism. Although this custom may be declining due to outside intervention and mixed feelings within the tribe, Traditional beliefs held that when a man is overtaken by a witch's power, in a state known as Kakua, the only way to expel the unwelcome presence is to kill and eat its host. Thank goodness we don't have to do that when we get sick. The Kurawai people do smoke tobacco, but they don't drink alcohol, and typically do not live past middle age due to their lack of medical knowledge. Men usually have several wives, and leadership is based on the personal qualities of influential individuals called big men. Contact between the Karawai and outsiders is fairly common, although some communities are largely unaware of the world beyond their homeland and are known for being hostile towards unfamiliar people. Karawai communities have also been known to feud with one another. The further one ventures into the rainforest, the more likely they are to come across a Karawai village that has had little exposure to any culture other than its own, according to Paul Raffaele, who interacted with the tribe firsthand in 2006. Writing for Smithsonian Magazine, Raffaele argued that the Karawai have no more than one generation left of their traditional culture, as young men and women become increasingly assimilated with mainstream society. It's sad to lose out on a traditional culture, even if they do practice cannibalism. But this seems to be a growing trend amongst the tribe. 7. Nomole Also known as the Cuyareño people and Nomole, the Mashkopito are a tribe of nomadic hunter-gatherers who live in Manu National Park in the Madre de Dios region of southeastern Peru. Found in some of the most remote parts of the Amazon, they actively avoid contact with non-indigenous people. The term Mashkopiro translates to savage in the pure language and is considered to be insulting. Instead, the group calls themselves the Namole. They speak a dialect of the pure language and live in a community of raised wooden homes deep in the rainforest, where they craft spears out of bamboo reeds and ferment fruit into alcohol. The group's population dwindled after rubber industry kingpin Carlos Fermin Fitzcarraldd hired a private army to slaughter the Namole in 1984. By 1976, the tribe's numbers hit an all-time low of somewhere between 20 and 100. In 1998, the International Work Group for Indigenous Affairs estimated the Namole population at somewhere between 100 and 250. 
Today, the group is thought to number somewhere between 600 and 800, with the numbers continuing to grow. In recent years, the Enamole have increasingly interacted with the outside world. Experts speculate that a food shortage could be to blame, but nobody really knows why the tribe is finally emerging from isolation. Despite their occasional willingness to engage with non-indigenous people, the Nemole will not hesitate to attack or kill someone they perceive as a threat. The Peruvian government discourages contact between the Nemole and outsiders, but also has its own plan in place to pursue what's known as controlled contact. Meanwhile, activists are campaigning for the authorities and everyone else to leave the Nemole alone entirely. What do you think? Should outsiders leave the Nemole alone? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. 6. The Protected Sentinelese North Sentinel Island is part of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands archipelago, located in India's Bay of Bengal. It's home to an indigenous tribe called the Sentinelese, who experts know very little about due to their long-established history of violently rejecting contact with the outside world. For thousands of years, the tribe has lived in near-complete isolation, speaking a language that nobody else in the world knows. The Sentinelese have attacked or killed nearly everyone who has tried approaching them. They're so hostile, authorities have even decided against trying to retrieve the bodies of slain outsiders to avoid further violence. Nobody knows why these Sentinelese are so quick to attack, although a good guess is that they simply want to be left alone. But their self-imposed seclusion benefits them because they have no natural immunity or resistance to a handful of modern diseases and sicknesses. Most people are able to survive them, but they could easily kill tribe members. In 1956, the Indian government implemented legislation banning visitors from going within five nautical miles of Andaman Island for their safety and ours. Only a select handful of professionals have been allowed there since including Indian anthropologist Trilokanath Pandit, whose team established the first and only peaceful interaction with the Sentinelese in 1991. Some people have ignored the ban against visiting Andaman Island, with deadly consequences. The most recent case happened in 2018 when a 26-year-old American Christian missionary named John Chow paid fishermen to illegally ferry him to the island. Chow knew the dangers associated with going near the Sentinelese, but he was so intent on spreading Christianity to the tribe even though he didn't know the language and they certainly didn't speak English, he still went anyway. He tried multiple times to get to shore on a kayak, but he was only met with arrows every time. Eventually, the men who ferried the missionary saw the Sentinelese dragging Chow's lifeless body. The fishermen who helped Chow reach the off-limits island were arrested and charged for their crimes but the Indian government does not prosecute the Sentinelese for killing invaders. Considering all that is known about the tribe, the answer to avoiding a volatile encounter is simple. Follow the law and stay away from their island. 5. The Hidden Awa The Awa people of Brazil live deep in the Amazon basin, numbering no more than 350. They are considered to be the world's most threatened indigenous group with at least 100 of those 350 members having had no contact with the outside world. The Awa lived in small settlements until the early 19th century when they were forced to become nomadic in order to escape European attackers and encroachers. During that time, the invaders removed most of the forest of the Awa's territory. Although some of the Awa moved on to government-established settlements during the 1980s, most continued to live in nomadic extended family groups, numbering only a few dozen members. The Brazilian government implemented measures to protect the Awa in 1982 due to some increased violence with local settlers who were also destroying the tribe's land. Writing for Vanity Fair, Alex Shumatov explains that the Awa people are smaller in stature than your typical human, which is believed to be an adaptation to life in the jungle, enabling tribe members to traverse the rugged terrain and dense vegetation with ease compared to the average-sized person. Families go on extended hunting and gathering trips that can last several weeks. They also have been documented keeping primates as pets. The tribe stays as invisible as possible to the outside world as a way to protect themselves from being pushed out of their territory. 
members of this elusive group are rarely seen. In fact, they're so good at remaining hidden. Some people have even questioned whether they still actually exist. Footage of an Awa tribesman that was captured in 2019 by a neighboring tribe proves that this tribe is very much real. But as deforestation continues, NGOs like Survival International are working to protect uncontacted tribes and fight for rights of indigenous people. 4. Tara Menane There are only two remaining indigenous groups in Ecuador that we know of who purposefully remain isolated from the outside world. One of them is called the Tara Menane, which has an estimated 150 to 300 members left and is located in the Yasuni National Park. The Tara Menane live as nomads in a distinctly inhospitable part of the jungle. They don't wear clothes and they speak a language unlike any other, according to a Newsweek article by Dolores Ochoa. Little else is known about the lifestyle, culture, and customs because the tribe adamantly rejects contact with outsiders to protect themselves. Illegal logging and oil development within the jungle threaten this shrinking population. And the Ecuadorian government's failure to protect the tribe amounts to an uncertain future for the Taramanane at best. A plan to stop oil drilling in the group's territory failed to secure the necessary funding and was scrapped in 2013. There are even unfortunate rumors that some loggers, along with other workers, are known to kill tribe members. Several indigenous groups in Yasuni National Park have been decimated by disease brought on by increased proximity with outsiders, according to Survival International. This could easily happen to the Taramenane too, who have no natural resistance or immunity to diseases from outside their small territory. 3. Piripkura There are only two known living members left of the Piripkura tribe in west-central Brazil's Mato Grosso state. They are an uncle and nephew named Pakye and Tamandua, and they live a nomadic lifestyle, striving to maintain their separation from the rest of society at all costs. Illegal loggers slaughtered most of the 20 members of the Piripkura tribe during the 1980s, and protection didn't come to the group until 2008, when the Brazilian government demarcated a parcel of land in the Amazon specifically for Pakye and Tamandua. The pair consciously chose to continue living in isolation from the rest of the world, demonstrating their resilience and their dedication to their way of life, even after their fellow tribe members were brutally killed. A 2017 documentary called Piripkura follows the researchers from FUNAI, the Brazilian government agency tasked with protecting indigenous rights, on their mission to prove that the two men are still alive. Paki and Tamandua willingly approached the filmmakers after a torch they've been burning for 18 years went out. Funai workers performed some medical exams on the men, relit their torch, and then parted ways. Since then, activist efforts have focused on protecting the pair through legislation, designating a parcel of land just for them. 2. Chimbu Skeleton Dancers In the central highlands of Papua New Guinea, there is a little-known tribe called the Chimbu, their first known interaction with outsiders happened when Australian explorers encountered the group in 1934. The Chimbu are unique for the dances they perform, dressed as skeletons, to scare enemy tribes. This tradition was developed with the idea that their enemies would not perceive them as human and would believe the dancers have supernatural powers. Very little is known about this extremely remote and isolated group who live in rugged mountain valleys. Traditionally, men live separately from women and children in dispersed settlements, but the Chimbu are starting to live as family units, Violet Johnson wrote for The Guardian. Their houses are oval or rectangular and are made from flattened reeds with dirt floors and thatched roofs. As the skeleton dancers attract tourists, the tribe has started reforming for the public rather than strictly ritualistic reasons. But the rest of their culture and customs remain, for the most part, a mystery. 1. Ayoreo The Ayoreo Indigenous Peoples Territory straddles the border between Paraguay and Bolivia. Numbering around 5,000, they're divided into subgroups that are rumored to sometimes be hostile towards one another and to outsiders. But this small society of hardy survivors has more reasons to fear the rest of the world than we have to fear them. Historically, the Ayoreo were hunter-gatherers. Today, some live and work on Mennonite cattle ranches for very little pay. Sadly, the society's lifestyle and culture have been severely disrupted in a very short time by people wanting to develop their land. 
one subgroup, the Totobiego Sode, had minimal contact with others until they were forcibly resettled during the 1970s and 80s. As a result, many died from illness and malnutrition. Today's Ayureo communities largely lack modern conveniences like electricity, medical care, and clean water. Diseases like malaria and tuberculosis are common. Moreover, the group's housing is ramshackle and they often encounter violence from non ayureo people. The Ayureo are also entangled in an ongoing fight for recognition of the land ownership amid rampant deforestation of the Chaco forest that they call home. As ranchers encroach on the land, indigenous communities in the region face imminent threats to their survival. In 2019, the Ayureo secured a landmark victory when they received ownership documents for nearly 44,500 acres of their ancestral territory. This does not necessarily mark the end of the group's fight for the rights, but it marks a tremendous step forward in their quest for recognition and protection. Thanks for watching. Which of these tribes did you find the most interesting? Let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Oh, <laughs>